Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, we'll be creating a Ubuntu desktop virtual machine in Oracle VirtualBox 7.1.2. To start, we'll need an ISO image for Ubuntu desktop that we can use to install the OS. Fortunately for all of you, I have the link for that, which I've included in the description in case you haven't found it already. So let's go to that website and click on download. It's a five gigabit file, so you should expect it to take a bit of time depending your internet speed. When it does finish, you should have a file name similarly to this. Good news is we now have our ISO image, so we're ready to move on to working with VirtualBox. Let's get that started. All right, VirtualBox is running, and the first step is to click on the new button on the toolbar. This will bring up the Create Virtual Machine template. There are four sections here that we'll be dealing with in order to get our VM going. The first one we'll be working with is the Name and Operating System section. You can see there's a red diamond with an exclamation point at the end of the name field, so we must fill that in. I'm going with Ubuntu, but you can call it whatever you want. And as you can see, we get a nice green check mark for our efforts. The next option says Folder. And that's where you'll be storing your VM files. I'm going to change it to point to my D drive where I have more space. Now we have the ISO image. It has a green check mark, but I think that's kind of a mistake. If we leave it like this, we'll just get prompted for it later. Instead, I'll click on the down arrow at end of the field and click on other. Now I can browse to my download folder where the ISO image landed. Once you select the ISO file, the addition, type and version will be appropriately populated. Now let's check on the unattended install tab. Feel free to change the username and password. Moving on, let's click on the hardware tab. Here you can change the base memory and number of processors. I generally like to give my VM eight gigabytes of memory. Now let's click on the hard disk tab. The only thing I tend to change here is the size of the hard disk. In this case, I'm going to make it 20 gigabytes. You do also have the option to select an existing virtual hard disk or have none at all. That's pretty much it. Let's click on the finish button to begin the actual installation. Click on Install Ubuntu. Click on VBox user or whatever the default username is. Enter the password and press enter. The Ubuntu installation does take a while, but once it's done, it starts right up. I've sped it up significantly just so you can see it finish. Everything works as you would expect. You can install additional software, browse the internet, pretty much whatever you like. If you found this content useful, it would sure help out the channel if you would give the video a like. I cover all sorts of technologies, including software development, hardware support, and software tools. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and have a great day.